Congratulations on completing your first two projects, um, creating flags in Adobe Photoshop. You use the rectangular marquee tool and you also use the polygon lasso tool. And we're going to create, continue with our last flag project to get you introduced into Photoshop. You can see here, I'm here on the class page and this is the flags that we're going to create. We're going to get a little bit more fancy now. Um, we're going to create both Japan flags, we're going to create the Venezuelan flag, Australia, Cuba, Honduras, Puerto Rico, and the United States of America. So let's blow this out so we can see it a little bit better. So let's do Japan. So thinking about Japan, we've used the rectangular marquee tool. We've also used the polygon lasso tool, but we have not, we can't create a polygon with this. There's no way to create a, a spear or a circle. These bands here, we know how to create those. We can use the polygon lasso, but we still need to create this spear. So let's go out into Photoshop and let's get used to this other tool. We've used it before, but not this specific instance of it. So we're going to create two versions of Japan. I'm going to create the first one. I'm going to make my new layer. Call it Japan. Now, to create my area, I know Japan is a solid white area, so I'm going to go ahead and fill, turn this to, so I can get Q white. And I'm going to fill in my whole screen is white. Japan is a white flag with a red circle in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and change my color to red. I know it's going to be that, my foreground color. Now, how can I create that circle? Well, in the video one, we talked about the marquee tool. But we also talked about when you have this little edge with that little triangle, that means there's options to it. I showed you it in video one. You might have forgotten about it. If I click and hold on this, you can see I have a rectangular marquee tool, but I also have an elliptical one. I also have a single row and a single column. For this one, obviously, we will need the elliptical marquee tool. I'm going to select that one, and I simply have to drag my circle. So I can drag my circle, and you can see I can make it whatever I want. If I want to make the circle completely aligned, height and width, I hold shift, and you can see it's going to create a perfect circle for me. So I can hold shift, and if I want to move it while I'm doing this, I can hold space bar, and I can move this perfect circle anywhere I want. So again, I'm going to release that. So if I'm simply just want to draw some type of circle, might not necessarily needs to be perfect. I can just click and drag. I can estimate it. But if I want a perfect circle, I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard. And you can see I can just drag up and it's going to be perfect. And I'm going to push space bar so I can kind of move it, this perfect circle. I'm holding both at the same time, shift and space bar. Kind of position it in the middle. And then you all are in those steps from here. Click my paint bucket tool and I fill it in. Click back on my marquee tool and I'm pretty much done. That is Japan. Now to create this Japan, you can see it's a slightly smaller circle. And then we have these bands around it. I'm going to start it and then I'm going to let you finish it. So for this Japan, I'm going to turn this one off. I'm going to make another pan, Japan. Let's just call it Japan 2, right? Do the exact same thing. I'm going to switch this and change this to white. Because I know I need red later, so that's why I switched it. Click on my paint bucket tool with white as my foreground. I'll fill it in. Now I'm going to create my spear. And this one is not necessarily perfect. This one is, this one kind of isn't. But it's smaller. So I come back over here. I can use this as a guide. So mine's is kind of like, like this. Remember I can hold space and I can move it around. And then when I let go space, I can kind of draw again. So I'm gonna do mine like here. 
And then I'm going to switch my foreground, my background color, use my paint bucket tool, and fill that in. Then I can deselect. So I'm going to go with that. Now from here, you should know how to do the rest of it. You can see I can use these bands. I need to create these bands. So I need to create a band that goes directly to that edge, right? And all these bands that go all the way around. So I'm just going to do these bands on how I would do it. I would section these off. So I can see this one band here goes to the point. I can see this edge goes to the point. I can see this band goes to the point. I can see this band goes to the point. So I would do those four and then in between I would section off the rest of them. So let's do these bands. You can see here. To do that, those straight lines, remember you're going to use the polygon lasso tool. If you're using the lasso tool, it would be very hard to create a straight line unless you have a sketch pad. You can actually buy devices where you can, it has it comes with a tablet and a pen, you can draw on it and what you draw actually comes in the Photoshop for you to edit. But in our instance we don't have that so we're going to click on lasso tool, click on this polygon lasso tool. I know it starts directly in this edge so I'm going to click on this edge. And I'm just going to drag down to my circle. And then I'm going to kind of estimate it like that and I'll close it off. Remember as you get closer to the end you can see that circle. I can click it. Now I know I'm overlapping but this is only the area shown so that's not going to affect anything. It's simply filling in an area that's not fillable. It's like drawing on the table versus the sheet of paper. I'm going to fill this in. And to deselect, another way, up here there is an application mark called Selection. We haven't talked about this before, but you can do, I can see Select. There's a bunch of different things in here you will use throughout this year. Inverse, um, you can save the selection, but I, I simply want to deselect. So I have my first band, right? Again, I'm going to do it this way. I have my first band here. I'm going to do the bands that intersect these. I'm going to do this one that one, and then that one. So I'm going to do my same, my polygon lasso tool. I'm going to start in this corner because I know it starts there. I'll come here, I'll just come out a little bit. It comes like that, right? Then I'll complete it. Grab my paint bucket tool. I'll fill it in. I'll do select, deselect. So I have that one. Do it again. I know it starts in this very corner. I'll come to this, give a little edge, do like that, bring it down, connect it, use my paint bucket tool, I'll fill it in, I'll do select, deselect. Do it again. I know it starts in this very corner here. I'll come down, do that. I'll connect my guy. I'll fill it in. So I'm starting to get what I need. So the next part of this, I'm going to let you finish on your own, is you can see I have a band going here. I have one kind of going halfway across. I would simply split it. I know I'm going to do one halfway across here and here and here. So I would do those next. I'll come here. This is a kind of halfway across. So I would simply go like this, connect it, and then I would fill it in using my paint bucket tool. Select, I would deselect. I use my, I know I have two bands here, so I would do the same thing. Use my paint bucket tool, fill it in. I would deselect. I have one more here. And again, we're just kind of estimating this. It's not exact. I would fill it in. So if we look at my left side, I have one band that goes exact, one band that goes exact, one band that goes in the middle, and then these two. But if I look back over here, I have that. That goes exact, that goes exact, one goes across, and then one that kind of splits it. 
I do the exact same thing up here, here, and here. So you can see I would want to split it in half. I would do this one right here. I would fill it in. Then I have a band on each side. So I'm going to use my polygon lasso tool and fill it in. And then I would do the exact same thing again. And you kind of get the point of this. A little more. And I would fill it in. So you can see I'm starting to look like my, actually this one has two. So it had one over here and it has two. So that's why mine looks off. Again, if you mess up in Photoshop, you can do edit, step backwards. So I'll step backwards again. Then I'll do select, deselect. So over here I actually have two more that I have to build. So I messed up, okay, that's great. I can still fix myself by doing that. Cycling my paint bucket tool, filling it in. Select, deselect, because I don't want that one. I want to create my next one. Do that, connect it, fill it in, and you get the point. So that's how you're able to create this. In this video, we introduced you. You've used the marquee tool before. You've used the rectangular one. Now we're using the elliptical one to create these effects to create Japan and you're able to create all these other flags that you'll need. So the next thing I actually want to show you, I'm not going to complete this, you should have the skills to complete this one. I want to show you how to draw stars. You're going to need this in order to create this lesson. So back in Photoshop, for Venezuela, I'm going to need stars. For the United States, I'm going to use stars. For Puerto Rico, I'm going to need stars. For Cuba, I'm going to need stars. For Australia, I'm going to need stars. So how to draw a perfect star. So I'm going to hide this. Again, you should complete that on your own. I'm going to make a layer. And I want to do Venezuela. So I'm going to show you. I'll make a new sweller called Venezuela. Venezuela has yellow, blue, and red. They're equally portioned. So I'm going to go select my rectangular marquee tool. Try to guesstimate. The top one was yellow, blue, then red. So I'm going to leave my red there. I'm going to switch this. And I'm going to select yellow. I'll fill it in. It looks a little... So this yellow is a little darker, so I, I want to change that. I'm going to change it here and kind of... It looks more orangey. Uh, that's more green. I like that a little bit. And we got our blue and then our red. So use my marquee tool. I'm going to kind of drag it. And make this blue. I want it to be that good royal blue. Or was it a darker blue? I think it was a darker blue. Like that. And these are a paint bucket tool, fill it in. That red is a little bit, it should be equal, so I'm going to move this up. I use the keyboard, remember you can use keyboard up and down when something's selected. And I'll fill that in. And then I'll simply drag over to kind of make this equal. I'll flip my red to the front. And I'll fill that, I'll fill that. 
and that's pretty good for me. So I have this. My red, is, my yellow is a little off. I can fix that by making it a little bit more bright, more dark. But I got to create these stars. So the part about this is creating a star is how do we draw a star? We know we can use the polygon lasso tool. We can try to freeform, freehand a star. But to create a star, we're going to create the stars above, and I'm going to introduce you to a new tool called the Move tool. The Move and the Duplicate tool, because you're going to have to move the stars into certain areas, and we want to duplicate. Once we get one perfect star, we want to duplicate that. So I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to call it Star. Now, I know the star is really small. You can see I need eight stars here, and it needs to be really small. But... I'm going to start off by creating the biggest star possible. That way I can make sure my star is pretty good. So I'm going to use my same polygon lasso tool here. To create a star, some people do it this way and it's a lot harder. They go like this and they try to get it perfect. And it looks pretty good. And if I fill it in, you can see it's kind of off. I would say draw a star like you do on a paper. Most people on a paper draw it like this. I click at the top, I go to this corner, I click here, I come to this corner, I click here, I go directly across, I click here, I come directly down, I click here, and then I go directly up. And I click there. You can see, even though I crossed lines, it simply selects everything. And it gives me a better star. I can do it again. So I'm going to do, I'll click here. Again, I'm trying to make the biggest star possible. I'll click here. Try to click here. I'll come back across. Click here, I'll click here, and then I'll end my star there. Here's my paint bucket tool. Oops, black is my foreground. I actually want to flip that. White's my foreground. And I can deselect my star. So there's a star, pretty good star. And you can see my star is on its own layer. Now I want to, now I have a star that I'm happy with. I want to scale it. I want to move it to be smaller. You can see here, I got to have it really small. And I have to create eight more stars. So I don't want to redraw all these stars. Once I have a star that I'm pretty happy with, I'm okay with this star. I want to simply be able to duplicate it easily. So I have this star. The first thing I want to do is scale it down. There's a bunch of ways to do this in Photoshop. The way I'm going to show you is using the Move tool. So the Move tool, we've used this marquee tool. We've used the Lasso tool. The first tool is called the Move tool. You can see it has the mouse with the cross hatch for north, south, east, west. I'm going to click on that. Now the Move tool does exactly what you think. It moves. It moves it to wherever I want it. So I'm going to need that to position the stars, right? But also the Move tool, I can scale stuff. And the reason I can scale stuff, because remember, this is your options bar for every tool. So you can see for the Move tool, my option is I have a transform controls. It's automatically off, but I'm going to turn it to on. And then it gives me the scaling box. If I drag from here in the edge, I can get it all the way down to kind of where I want it to be. And whenever you scale something, you can see this don't apply or apply. I actually want to apply that. So I scaled it down. Again, I used my move tool and I turned on my transform controls here. I just simply want to turn that off. Now I want to move this to the area I want, so this area. I know I need to have eight 
So four going up, four going down. So I'm happy with the size of it. If I wasn't, I can turn this back on, scale it in some more, then I could apply it, turn off my transform controls, and I can kind of move this where I want. So I have that. So again, this is the move tool. Now I want to duplicate this. I don't want to redraw the star. I don't want to rescale the star. The move tool is also the duplicate tool, but you have to use your keyboard. If you hold Alt on a Windows keyboard or Options, I'm on a Mac, so I'm holding Options, you can see the mice becomes two mice. So if I let it go, you can see it's the mouse pointer and the crosshatch, north, south, east, west. You can see that here better on yellow. But if I hold Options on Mac and Alt on Windows, it becomes two mice, which is the Duplicate tool. So with the Duplicate tool, I simply click and drag while holding this keyboard button down. And you can see it made a duplicate copy. It also duplicated the entire layer. So I'm going to do this again, and again, and again, and again I'm holding either on Windows it's Alt on your keyboard, on Mac it's Options, I'm going to do it again. So you can see I created one star using the Move tool. I scaled it using the options bar show transform controls. Then I selected hold use the keyboard options on Max and Alt on Windows to create the duplicate tool and I duplicated this, which kind of gives me my stars. If I wanted to get them a little bit more, again I'm still on the move tool, so I'll this star is this one. Let's say I wanted this to be over here. And this star is this one. I could move it wherever I wanted to, right? I move this one a little bit more over here. Make it a little bit more rounded. I like that there. This one I kind of want like that. You also can use your keyboard up down buttons to move stuff as well when you're on the move tool. This one I kind of want parallel with that. Actually, I'll scale them out a little bit more. I'll put this one over. I'll put this one over. It's four going up and four going down, so I'm actually missing a star. So that's four, and I'm going to hold Alt, and I'm going to drag this over. That's what my problem was. Now you can see I can move this over a little bit, give it a little bit more shape, move this one over, move this one over. And with that, we have Venezuela. Now here's the problem. We have all these layers, but I only want the stars on my Venezuelan layer. So I can merge these layers down. And the way to do that is using my application option up here, Layer. You can see they have a bunch of different things. If I scroll to the very bottom, merge down, and what it did is now it has these two. So I'm going to go back to layer, scroll down, merge down. You can see now it merged those three. It's going to merge this one, this one, this one, this one, all the way till I get to Venezuela. So I'm going to go to layer, merge down, layer, merge down, layer, Go to the bottom, merge down. You can see this is now all of these are on one layer, right? I gotta do it two more times. Layer, merge down, layer, merge down. You can see that's all my stars, but I actually want it on Venezuela. So I'm gonna do it one more time. Go to layer, merge down, and now my stars. And now my stars are on Venezuela. So in this lesson, I've showed you how to
create a star using the polygon lasso tool. I also introduced you to the move tool here, which you can see is that when I hold options on a Mac or alt on a Windows, it becomes a duplicate tool and you're able to create this, the Venezuelan flag. So the rest of this lesson, you're going to be on your own. You also got introduced into the elliptical tool. You should create the remaining of these flags. Japan, Venezuela, Australia, Cuba, Honduras, Puerto Rico, and last but not least, the United States of America. And again, make it as exact as possible. So you should have 50 stars for the United States of America. So good luck, and when you're done, you can turn in your assignment on your portfolio.